Okay, moving on with the repair. Capacitors came from the distributor and now I'm gonna start moving on to the other systems, the power supply and the PAs. But before I do that, I'm starting to reassemble other subsystems that are not part, not they're not gonna get in the way of those. So it's good so to avoid any uh, any problems with the with the wires and boards dangling that could actually tear those wires. So I don't I want to preserve the maximum as possible and try to avoid any any rework as as much as I can. So uh, so basically I'm reassembling all these these subsystems in here. And the last one that I'm reassembling before I tackle those two those boards is the the small back panel in here. When reassembling the back panel, actually most of the systems in here, but mostly those uh, RCA connectors, they, their bases are in plastic. So usually uh, those plastic bases use those types of screws that actually create a thread as they actually are, 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 are inserted. Uh, the important bit here is to, you want to avoid the maximum, uh, as, as much as possible, to keep creating new threads because you weaken the plastic. The plastic already has threads created by the original manufacturer and you don't want to just tie the screws in any way so you would actually have uh, so you actually recreate a thread and destroy the plastic. So a technique that I know since I was a kid and many other YouTubers also point to that is that uh, you actually rotate the screw backwards until you feel a a dip. Did you see? So once you feel a dip, you know that the screw actually fell into place, into the the old th the original thread. So you can start over, and then screwing it over again, because then you are absolutely sure that you are inside the original thread. That's actually very important, especially with this vintage uh, equipment in here. Well, the replacement started and uh, you really can appreciate the difference in size between the original 220 microfarads by 100 volts and the 330 microfarads by 63 volts just like many other capacitors all around uh, the board one aspect here there is a little bit one here actually four of them that are in fact bipolars so i would have to adjust this meaning that they have no they're not polarized meaning that i have to use an association between two uh, capacitors together to, to get the non-polarized versions. Well, fabricating the two, the two non-polar capacitors, I already did the 10 microfarad one. This is the 2.2. Basically, the value, it's four point, each capacitor here is 4.7, 4.7 microfarads. So when you associate them in series, the capacitance is is reduced meaning is the proportional value of the two the two capacitors in this case because they are equal the value is half so it will be a capacitor of roughly 2.35 microfarads and the voltage uh, is the is the addition is the sum of the both voltages so each capacitor is uh, 35 volts so this will be a capacitor of 70 volts maximum so it has enough uh, strength dielectric strength to hold uh, the uh, the voltages because the original capacitor was by 16 volts so it's well within the margin so basically that's just that's just how you do the calculations and soldering just the two oh and also important solder the two terminals that are identical meaning I'm soldering here the two negative terminals uh, together and then the two positive terminals go to the to the sides. This is essentially what is a non-polarized capa electrolytic capacitor is in internally to its uh, in its in, in its housing. It's basically two uh, electrolytic capacitors connected back to back. All right, here's the board. Now it was quite dirty of flux from the manufacturer itself, so I did a, a little bit of a cleanup on it. Uh, and now, with all the majestic capacitors now, uh, <laughs> all brand new ones, and there's a little bit of a glue here, 
uh, here and there uh, on, the, on, the, on the board itself from the previous capacitors uh, but this glue I, I, I won't risk trying to scrape it off it just doesn't have any functionally uh, it doesn't have any problems it's just only aesthetically uh, a little bit unpleasing but overall everything is fine including the bipolar capacitors that I added here <laughs> so this board is f completed now the only, la the only remaining boards are the two power amplifier ones so diving right in well, PA is removed, had to desolder a, a few wires and disconnect a few others. Beautiful, beautiful piece for the four transistors, the ultra heavy uh, heat sink. And here's the other side of it. So there are two, of course, so one's flip it on, on its end. So these are the driver transistors as well. As I mentioned before, the greens are typically uh, PNP and the blacks are NPN. So that's pretty much how how the PA is. These are the balancing resistors the for the each for each channel, but each pair of transistors. And these are the bias the bias uh, trim pots for adjustment. Uh, and basically, these are the guys that are going to replace. There's one, two, three, and four here. And of course, the same on the other on the other channel. Interesting, interestingly enough. Why put these capacitors slanted towards the heat sink? These capacitors, the heat sink is poison to these things. So over, over the years, it, it becomes very difficult to understand why would someone just push them uh, towards the heat sink. The, completely, completely impossible to understand. But overall, that's, that's it. This is a module. <laughs> this is an entire module. So basically what I have to do disconnect the transistors from the the sockets there's a, a small socket for the transistors in there so I need probably need to just pull the pull the board so it would actually remove from the sockets or actually remove the, the sorry remove the screws and then pull the transistors out of the sockets so then everything will be fine well I don't think I would need to desolder anything to be able to work on this board anyways that's it, the beautiful, two beautiful PAs. It's a really, really wonderful thing to look at. Moving on. Okay, here we are, the board, uh, with the four sockets for the TO3 uh, three transistors. The board itself, because, oops, sorry of the, about the glare, but the board itself is pretty dirty. But of course, it actually heats up quite a lot. So there may be also a uh, sign of times on this board. I'll do a, a, a little bit of cleanup on it as well uh, before I, I close everything up. And that's the, that's the other side which we saw uh, before. So the transistors themselves, pretty important. Pretty, uh, pretty important, you see the, the heat sink compound is already dried up but at least the micas, the insulating micas are still good so I'm gonna remove these, this is extremely thin and extremely brittle so you have to remove them really carefully and, and reapply the, the, the compound, the thermal compound so you can actually get everything new again so the transistor can operate uh, really well another thing very important whenever you're actually reassembling everything always use an ohmmeter Whenever we assemble, to avoid connection, uh, electric connection between the collector, which is the cover, the the uh, darn it, the enclosure of the of the part, and the the heat sink, because these are all insulated between them. So if one shorts with the other, you have a big, real big explosion, and you're gonna damage the components and damage the the transistor, the rare and expensive transistors. <laughs> so overall, there you go. The PA is underway. <laughs> well, here are the two amplifiers finished. I applied thermal paste, thermal grease uh, between each and every transistor and its heat sink so you can get better thermal conductivity and also to the tiny little uh, 
thermal sensor, temperature sensor in here as well on the side so we can actually get proper feedback. So this is one amplifier on the other side too. There you are. There's a all the transistors you can see it's a little bit gray out. I'll do a little bit of a cleanup so it doesn't get too ugly uh, on that. But everything is ready. It's ready to go now. Here's the other the other channel. And zooming in a little bit so you can get a better idea of what was done. And despite not everything looks perfect, it is good enough for the for the what is important is behind the actual metal tab of the transistor so in and the, the heat sink itself similar thing with the other side the other side is a little bit more complex because it has not only the transistor itself but also has the mica so you need to actually put in between the mica which is an isolate insulating material it, it, the mica actually needs uh, grease on both sides so you can get better uh, thermal conductivity but overall everything is fine one of the biggest pitfalls of this and is when you disassemble and take out the transistors you need to be absolutely sure <laughs> to put them in the correct positions again otherwise big boom ensues <laughs> okay this this actually concludes all the actual work done uh, I still need to figure out with Evan the capacitor situation but overall this is pretty much the the end of the of the actual heavy soldering and mechanical job well the last step is to actually uh, verify the capacitors uh, the removal of the amplifiers uh, left these capacitors very isolated so I, it's easy to test them in circuit this is the top capacitor which has the the plastic uh, shell a little bit deformed and this is the bottom capacitor which seems which has no deformity at all and despite this despite the the the, the age these capacitors are still in excellent shape so you, you can see here it's at 15,000 microfarads so it's a little bit less than the capacitance that he actually specifies although the tolerance of these capacitors was tended to be really high really wide but still it's a 40 year old capacitor but the dissipation factor uh, is extremely low at this point so it's interesting to see how uh, how uh, the capacitor is surviving very well uh, the test of time and if I take to the to the top one the top one and just unplug and replug the top one it shows a little bit less capacitance it's 13.6 but the dissipation factor is still extremely good so definitely um, definitely the capacitor still lasts for a few years and because of the chip uh, the component shortage I cannot find really a, a suitable capacitor with the same terminals and the same size uh, a suitable size that fits in there so I'll, I'll probably tell Evan that you hold on to those for now and, 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 and maybe, who knows, in a few years, <laughs> I come back in a video with more, uh, with more of this amplifier. So that's it. It's, it's, it's the last big test on this, on this set. Sorry about the crazy position of the amplifier, but it's fully turned on, all clean and washed. All the buttons are washed, front panel is clean everything is is really pristine apart from the switches i i couldn't really remove the switches the the complete scratch of the switches just need to operate them a little bit uh, longer and i was doing the burning on the amplifier uh it's been running for about an hour i turned off the music just just so i could speak but it was running for about an hour and no problems were observed and also the big capacitors completely dead cold so they're absolutely in that actually gives me extra confidence that the capacitors are still in good shape so I I'm, I'm, I'm confident that the capacitors the big capacitors that I couldn't replace still have a uh, quite some quite some time uh, of quite quite rest of a lifetime on them all right leaving the note to the next technician of the repair that were done and closing in the unit. And that's it. 
finished.